All right, let's finish this baby up. Welcome to part three of the Even Better series. So far we've taken a look at little ways in which you can paint even better eyes and noses. If you haven't checked out the first two parts of this series, I will link them up in the cards above and I highly recommend checking those out before this one. Today we're going to finish up the facial features by taking a look at how you can paint an even better mouth. More specifically, a mouth that's open and smiling with teeth showing. Yeah, we're going there. And today we're actually going to be painting two mouths, one that is neutral and closed and has no expression, and the other that is wide open and smiling with teeth shown, just so we're covering all of our bases today. If you enjoyed this bite-sized type video, then please do let me know by giving this video a thumbs up and leaving a comment below, or just like the pinned comment in the comment section, just so I know that you want to see more of these, otherwise I'll just not make them and focus more on giving you content that you might actually like. So if you want to see more of this series, then make Make sure you like the pinned comment or just like this video and comment below. If you like my art and my face and want to see more of both of these things, then make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. Come check out my Patreon where I put up exclusive content every single week, at least four days a week. Link is in the video description. Alright, here are my four tips to painting an even better mouth. If you've watched me paint for a while, you already know that I like to sketch in iterations. This is especially helpful when roughing out the mouth because there are some important marks to help you place everything that won't actually be visible in the final sketch. I always start by marking the width of the mouth, which is where the two corners of the mouth will go. Since our character here is smiling, the corners of her mouth are going to be pulled upwards. I then go in and join the two corners with two curves. The upper curve is going to be flatter than the lower curve and the width of the mouth shouldn't go beyond the center of each eye, at least in a realistic phase. I then like to do the three circle method, which I genuinely don't know where I picked up, but basically you place three circles, one in the center of the upper lip and two around the center of the lower lip. These are your biggest masses and these squash and stretch as the mouth moves. So when the mouth is smiling, all of these are stretched out to be flatter, but they don't come completely flatten out so it helps to create ovals where these would normally go because we can then create the borders of the mouth around these ovals and as you can guess these three circles are one of the things that won't appear in the final sketch so let's go ahead and clean the lines up. We're going to lower the opacity of the sketch layer and create a new layer on top. Now we can go in and make some important decisions. Now lips are very soft, especially in a child's face like the one we have here. And like I said on last week's video, if you want to make something look soft and plump, you want to use as few lines as possible. So even though we're gonna carefully select the lines we want in our final sketch, when it comes to rendering, we're likely gonna paint right over most of these lines. So for now, we're only really using the sketch as an indicator of the boundaries that we're later going to paint into. If you were creating line art, however, you'd want to be a little more careful about how many lines you're using. So here, for instance, if I want to create lines that I can preserve in the final painting, I'm going to make sure to only create lines that will act as ambient occlusion shadows. Going back to the painting, when it comes to sketching the teeth, I like to do the entire row of teeth with two continuous lines. So the upper edge of the teeth would basically be a bumpy line that defines where the gum ends and the teeth are visible. And the lower edge is going to be made of half squares and V shapes, which correspond to the bumps of the upper edge that we just drew. But at no point are these two edges going to meet in between. They're still going to have space in between the upper and lower lines, but because the lines are bumpy, you're gonna know where the individual teeth go. Do you ever look at your work and realize that everything is a little too dark and the details are just completely lost in the shadows? Well, I can tell you now, it's because you're starting with the highlights or midtones. Starting with your lighter tones is actually really dangerous because it means you have no sense of how dark is too dark. 
I always like to put down my shadows first before I even touch midtones, so it sets a precedent for how dark it's going to get. With that in place, I know that any tone that I put down after this is gonna have to be lighter, and as a result, my paintings come out looking a lot brighter and more balanced than they used to be. When it comes to the mouth, you want to make sure that all the visible parts disappear into the darkness. So if the tongue is visible, the back of it is going to disappear into darkness. If the teeth are visible, their outer edges are going to recede into the shadow. Obviously, this is because light doesn't naturally enter the oral cavity. With gums, I like to block them in with a dark flesh tone and then use a bright reddish pinkish tone and add some light to either side above each tooth. Tooth. I hope that makes sense, but the video will explain it. Gums are thin but fleshy and they wrap around each tooth individually, right? So you want to make sure that they have that 3D form, not just a bumpy edge. I also like to underline the entire row of teeth with a continuous shadow because remember, you want to treat a row of teeth as one single entity. That way you're avoiding creating dark shadows in between individual teeth that make it look like cavities or food stuff in between the teeth so we're gonna make sure that there aren't any black lines that go all the way across the teeth When it comes to painting lights, there are a couple of things to remember. Let's first look at the teeth. When it comes to adding highlights to each tooth, I always like to start with almost an Among Us character shaped highlight. So like this tall semicircle that runs just inside the outline of each tooth. This border catches light because it is where the teeth kind of mold backwards into the mouth. You can then blend the highlight inwards, but just make sure the teeth aren't a flat white because that just looks unnatural. With the lips, I always like to do two sets of highlight. The first is a broader form-based highlight. So this is gonna lie at the center of both the upper and lower lips and be very subtle and diffuse. It is really only there to indicate the form of the lip. The second highlight is the more fun specular light that indicates wetness or gloss on the lip. This is the one where you grab a bright white and an opaque brush and place little flecks of light to show that the surface of the lip is super shiny. I also really like to smooth out and brighten up the skin that is directly around the mouth just to avoid any shadows or texture that would kind of ruin the aesthetic of these soft plump lips unless that's the look you're going for in which case you go do your thing and don't let anyone tell you how to paint. But yeah, there's my four quick tips to even better mouths. And there we have it, there's our even better mouth. I hope you've enjoyed this video and learned something from it. And if you have, then please do let me know by giving it a big thumbs up and leaving a comment below. If you'd like to see more of the even better series in future, then please make sure you like the pinned comment in the comment section below. Make sure to subscribe for more tutorials every single week. And if you'd like to grab all of my art and even more exclusive tutorials and support the channel in the process, check out my Patreon, the link is in the video description. But with all of that said, so thank you so, so much for painting with me today i hope you've enjoyed it as much as i have check out some more even better tutorials up here um stick around for the discord shout outs and i'll see you guys on the next one bye